All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be learning about probability. The objective is that everyone will be able to make a tree diagram and use the counting principle to find the number of possible outcomes for an event. We're also going to be learning how to find the probability of an event. And as you can see, uh, this is working toward the development of some seventh grade standards for data analysis, statistics, and probability. First, what we need to do is examine what probability actually is. It is the measure of the likelihood that an event will occur. What are the chances that it will rain this week? What are the chances that it will rain tomorrow or even today? Most of you have probably heard of probability and what you didn't realize is the type of probability you learned was theoretical probability. This can be written as P or probability of an event and when we're finding theoretical probability we put the number of favorable outcomes over the number of total possible outcomes. And this will give us a ratio. Now, if the number of favorable outcomes is zero, then that means the event is impossible. It's kind of like if I'm trying to roll a number cube. The numbers one through six appear on the different surfaces. And when you roll it, there is no chance of rolling a 10. So the probability of rolling a 10 would be impossible. Now, anytime that the number of favorable outcomes is half of the number of total outcomes, then we say that this is an equally likely opportunity for that outcome to occur. The decimal equivalent is 0.5. And anytime the number of favorable outcomes is actually equal to the total number of possible outcomes, we consider this to be a certainty. That means that it is certain the event will occur. For example, back to the number cube. What are the chances of rolling a number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6? Well, 6 out of 6, which means that it is certain I will roll one of those 6 numbers. There's a 100% chance. And when we go to decimal equivalents, the decimal here is 0.75 and here is 0.25. So anytime that it's a likelihood that is greater than one half or the probability of an event is greater than one half, we say that it's likely to occur. And on the flip side, anytime that the event is less than one half or the probability of the event is less than one half, then it's not likely or unlikely. Okay, let's look at some examples. So here we have a spinner, and we're going to examine the difference between theoretical probability, the kind that you've probably heard of, and experimental probability. In theory, according to theoretical probability, the chances of this spinner landing on yellow, since all of the different spaces on the spinner are the same size and the spinner randomly selects the color that it lands on, we would say the chances are 2 out of which are the 2 is the number of favorable outcomes out of a total number of 7 possible outcomes. For red we can count again 2 favorable outcomes and seven total outcomes. The likelihood of the spinner landing on blue is one favorable outcome over seven total outcomes. And for green it would be again two favorable outcomes over seven total outcomes. Now when we do experimental probability, we actually perform the experiment and see what happens. So here we go. The first time it landed on red. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark underneath red. And we're going to spin again. Now it is blue. Once again, I'll make a mark under blue. 
and we'll spin again. Yellow, and we'll make a mark under yellow and spin again. Red it is again. So we make another mark under red and spin it again. This time it came up blue. As you can already see, according to our theoretical probability, blue was only supposed to occur one out of seven times. But it's already occurred twice out of five times. And this just goes to show that experimental probability may be slightly off from theoretical probability. The yellow hits again, and we spin one more time, and it is green. So I make a mark here. Now you can see what occurred after seven spins of the wheel. The green only landed one out of seven. The red landed 2 out of 7, which was what we predicted. The yellow also landed 2 out of 7, which we predicted. But the blue landed 2 out of 7, and we only predicted that it would land 1 out of 7 times. If we perform this experiment 100 more times, the more times we perform it, the more likely it is that these numbers in experimental probability will begin to resemble or more closely resemble the theoretical probability. <clears throat> now a tree diagram. So we have here a coin and the possibility is that it could land on heads as you can see or it could land on the other side, tails, when we spin it. We also have a number cube over here. Now what we're going to do is try to determine how many possible events could occur for flipping the coin and then rolling the number cube with six faces. Well, if we think about the number cube, there are a total of six possible events. So here we have the six numbers, either a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a five or a six. And then for the coin flip, we could either have heads or tails. So heads or tails, heads or tails. And this is what a tree diagram is. We're putting all the possibilities by drawing them out in a sort of tree diagram. And now we can go through and actually count the number of uh, possible outcomes. We could have a 1 in heads, that's one outcome. 1 in tails, two outcomes. 2 in heads, three outcomes. 2 in tails is four outcomes. And I'm going to continue. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 possible outcomes. And that's how you draw a tree diagram to determine the number of possible outcomes. Now we're going to move on. You have the option at lunch to either pick pizza or a cheeseburger for your entree. So here we have pizza and here we have a cheeseburger. You can have either ice cream, chocolate cake, or cookies for dessert. So we have chocolate cake, cookies, ice cream. How many different combinations could you make? Use a tree diagram to solve. And we're just going to say that you can only have one entree and one dessert to kind of simplify this. Well, if we made a tree diagram, first we would put the entrees. And then we have to realize that the entrees can go with each type of dessert. So we have a total of six different possibilities. <clears throat> and moving on. Next we learn about something called the counting principle. If X represents the number of ways to make one choice, and Y represents the number of ways to make another choice, then the product of X and Y will represent the number of possible outcomes. So 
So, as we continue here, we have a problem. It says you have the option at a pizza place to get original crust or thin crust. There are two types of pizza sauce. There are three types of cheeses. And you can have any one topping on your pizza, pepperoni, sausage, bacon, or ham. How many different combinations could you make? You can see in this example it would take a very long time in order to try to draw a tree diagram. So we came up with something called the counting principle. We have two styles of pizza. We have two types of sauce, three types of cheeses, and four possible toppings. So how many total outcomes are possible? 48. Now, that's saying that you can only choose one of each. Again, we're trying to simplify the process. Let's see if we can use the counting principle to solve the problem that we did previously. If we had two entrees and multiplied by three desserts, choices of dessert, then we would get a total of six possible ways to put together a plate with one entree and one dessert. Here's our final question. We have this bag with some different colored balls inside of it. What's the probability of choosing a red ball? Let's set up our problem first by writing probability of red equals, and then we have to determine what is the number of favorable outcomes. Okay, three. And the total number of outcomes? That's correct, 15. So if we simplify this probability, we get one-fifth, which is actually equal to a decimal value of 0.2. And if you convert that to a percent, that means 20% of the time, we will likely, according to theoretical probability, draw a red ball out of the bag if a ball is chosen at random. What's the probability of choosing a red ball or a blue ball? On this particular one, ooh, probability of red or green, I miswrote that. Here we go. The probability of choosing a red ball or a green ball. The probability of red or green, well, if we count them, there are three red and four green. So the favorable number of favorable events or outcomes would be 7 and the total number of outcomes is 15. Again you could convert that to a decimal by taking 7 divided by 15 and then even making it a percent. What's the probability of choosing a white ball? Again we would write the probability of white and if it's zero favorable outcomes, then we would say it's impossible within this particular bag. All right. Well, I hope this helped you out with understanding probability. See ya. See ya.